One of my favorite forms of statistical analyses is that of a canonical correlation when you're working with sets of related values. So let's say I've got a collection of values which I know have relations to each other and I'm comparing it to another set of values with a known relation to each other, correlations basically, then uh, the statistical method that you might use is a multivariate uh, tactic called the canonical correlation or CCA. A canonical correlation is basically where you compare a family of either uh, categorical or continuous variables to another family of categorical or continuous variables. Usually when we're doing these kinds of comparisons we would resort to something like a multiple regression. And so if you're trying to compare say this dominance measure which can range from uh, 0 to 4 so you could have 0.5 or 0.3 or 2.8 or whatever uh, a multiple regression would tell you how dominance compares to all these guys and so this might be your y and this might be your x and then you'd run a different multiple regression to compare arrogance to all these guys and so arrogance would be your y value and all these guys would be your x values but what if you know that dominance and arrogance are related to each other. Um, well, then maybe multiple multiple regressions won't work, or at least it won't give you the kinds of results that you're looking for because these two have kind of a cross relationship. That's where canonical correlation comes in because it 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 uh, accounts for the idea of uh, multicollinearity or uh, uh, covariances, I should say, among your variates here. Okay, so in this presentation here, I'm going to talk about what a canonical correlation is and how to understand all of its variables, uh, because I struggled with this when I was trying to do this particular kind of research, and uh, there's a lot to canonical correlation, but hopefully this video will help you understand it better. So as I mentioned before, canonical correlation is used to compare sets of related variables to other sets of related variables. These could be continuous or they could be categorical. So this aloofness might be a yes or a no, but coldness might be some scale between 0 and 10. Okay, You can think about the sets involved in a canonical correlation kind of like uh, two, play, two sets of players on, a, on football teams. So maybe you've got multiple measures associated with these teams. You might have a measure for each team. Uh, are certain people playing or not playing? So you can have categorical variables. Or maybe you're going to look at uh, yardage or points scored or whatever. Those can be associated with each team. Okay, so the overall sets in a canonical correlation are called variates, canonical variates. And so team A is a variate and team B is a variate. Uh, within a variate, you have variables. And so each of these players on the field here would be analogous to a variable in a canonical correlation. Now, because there are so many relationships involved, we have different terms for each of these kinds of things. Where your variables interact with each other, that's called collinearity. And this is the main reason that we use canonical correlation in the first place. If these guys never interacted with each other, you could just do a multiple regression saying, how does this player relate to this entire team? But because there's collinearity involved, he doesn't relate to this entire team on his own. His relations are um, moderated by his interactions with other folks. Okay, so we talked about that. And let's move on here. Okay, so here are some other terms involved with CCA. You have bivariate correlations. Bivariate correlations are just um, individual variables relating to each other. This player is somehow correlated with this player's moves. And you can do that between him and him, him and him, him and him, him and him, and so on. And usually, when you're starting formal research, before you get into this kind of thing, you'll do a bivariate correlation table. Um, and what that will show you is all of the numbers between this variable and that one and this variable and that one as well as these variables to individual variables on these sides. Okay, and that's how we show that. So there's a bivariate correlation between this player and this player as well. 
You also have something called canonical loadings. Canonical loadings are basically a variable's relationship to the performance of its of the, the entire set to which it belongs. But then you have canonical weights. Canonical weights are also referred to in some of the literature as function coefficients. And that's this individual variable's relationship to this entire other set when you don't consider collinearity. It's, it's going to approximate something in the family of a multiple regression, but not quite, especially because we also have canonical cross-loadings. The difference between canonical weight and canonical cross-loading is that canonical weight asks how much this guy's actions influence this entire set when we're not considering the uh, interactions with his other folks here. Canonical cross-loading say how much does he influence this entire set when we are considering his interaction with the rest of his team. Okay, And together, canonical uh, loadings and cross-loadings are called structure coefficients. Okay. Now the actual relationship between set A and set B, or variate A and variate B in this, is called a canonical correlation. It's the actual correlation of the whole thing. Um, obviously, because they consist of multiple variables, they're going to be really, really heavily um, affected by all these other things that we've talked about. All right. So when you do canonical correlation, you don't just get one result, you get multiple results. And these multiple results are called canonical functions. Again, going back to the football analogy, you can have team A versus team B on the whole, but typically you're going to do something like team A's offense versus team B's defense, and then you'd swap them, team A's defense versus team B's offense. And you could consider the first case to be one kind of canonical function and the second case to be a second kind of canonical function. So it turns out though that there are as many functions as there are the smaller number of variables. And so if you're doing a CCA on say uh, a set of 10 vari variables here and a set of five variables here, then you're gonna have five canonical functions. Okay, but not all of them are gonna be significant. You also have other measures in a canonical correlation called redundancy coefficients. And the redundancy coefficients um, ask whether these teams are actually kind of playing each other equally or if one is kind of a punching bag for the other. It's uh, the amount of contribution to the relationship between the two. So uh, one of the measures that you'll look at is shared variance. Uh, shared variance is it's uh, the R squared within a set. And that's how together these guys are. If there's really low shared variance, then they're just running all over the field. If there's high shared variance, then they're just really synchronized. You also have redundancy. This is a shared cross-loading variance. And this is how much their net effort affected the game. Maybe these guys tried really hard, but this team was full of badasses, and it just didn't matter. It didn't matter how hard they tried. Uh, in that case, uh, it's going to alter the, the shared cross-loading variance. Or maybe there's, there's very low um, variance between the two, and you can attribute the results to something that you didn't measure, like bad reps. Okay, so those are um, that's that's some of the main jargon that's involved in studying, you know, or in applying a canonical correlation. Remember, we're comparing sets to sets, and uh, essentially we can think of each of the variables inside of our variate. It's the whole package here, as being like players on football teams being compared to each other.